and welcome to my channel Nico Mag. My name is Nicole and this video will be about how to start taking film photos. If you're new here and like these type of videos, please like and subscribe. I have been taking film photos for about 10 years now, give or take, and I also do digital photography. My friends tend to go to me with their questions on how to do certain things in digital and film photography and also how to start. So I believe that even if you're using just your phone primarily as your main camera that you can still take film photos if you don't have to be super skilled in digital photography in order to take film photos. So in this video I will be talking about the different types of film cameras. I will be talking about instant, disposable, point and shoot, and SLRs. And at the end I will tell you how to get your film photos developed. I'm a firm believer that the best camera is the one that is with you. So whichever brand or type of camera you decide to get, as long as it gets you to go out and take some cool photos, I think that's the perfect camera. So instant film photography, I would say it's pretty self-explanatory. You load the instant film pack in the camera, you turn it on, you take your shot, and then the the photo comes out and you wait a few minutes for it to develop and all the colors and the image appear. When most people think of instant film photography, they obviously think of Polaroids because that's the oldest and most famous one. However, there are brands that do instant film photography as well, such as Fujifilm. I've used Fujifilm's Instax line of cameras and film for over 10 years right now and I highly recommend it to anyone that wants to dabble their feet into instant film photography. I have an Instax Mini 90, which is this one, sorry, this one, and I also have the Instax SQ6 that produces square folds versus the Mini one does wallet size folds. I kind of prefer the SQ6 ones a little bit more because the square folds are bigger so you can see more, but the Mini folds are definitely nice because you can put them in your wallet and you can also put in the back of your phone case. Other brands that also make film, instant film cameras are Lomography, theirs take Intax film, and if you got money, there's also the Leica Sofort, which is definitely more expensive, but that is an option if you want to have a very fancy instant camera. So I will show you guys sort of just a size comparison of the two films, that instant films I have. So this is the Mini and this is the Square. This one's of the Sydney Opera House. I took this around three years ago almost, and this one is a uh, Midway Falls and Big Sur. I took this about a couple months ago, give or take. So as you can see, the color of this one is still good, and that is because I keep my photos out of direct sunlight. If you leave these out in direct sunlight, I think they fade a lot faster. So that is why I don't display mine all over my wall, because I have enough instant photos that I could fill one of my apartment walls. And that is a lot of film photos over the course of like 10 years. <laughs> so I would say an instant camera I highly recommend. Great for parties, great for trips. I always take one on my trips to take a photos of me and whoever I travel with or just you know things I see that I think would look really cool to take photos of. For disposable cameras, basically you, you go out, take your photos, and then you give the film lab your camera and then they develop it. So disposable cameras are single use. So I have this one that I haven't used yet. This one is waterproof and it's a Fuji film. And there's obviously non-waterproof non versions made by Kodak and Fuji film that you can use. Uh, what's nice about disposable is that you don't have to worry about it like breaking or being stolen because it's a disposable camera. So I would say for certain situations, a disposable camera is handy. Like for example, if you want to take some photos of going out with your friends and you're going to be drinking, at least with a disposable, you don't have to worry about breaking your like, you know, nice camera. And they're also lightweight since they are plastic, so it's not too heavy to carry. However, disposable cameras are definitely not the most sustainable option these days. There are reusable disposable like cameras that you can buy. I know Kodak makes the M35 and M38. Basically it's just like a plastic film camera body with a that just takes like 
I think a AAA battery to for the flash and you can turn on and off the flash with a switch and you basically just roll the film in there snap away and you take out the film and you send it to a lab to develop and you can reuse the camera again but that is like the closest thing to like a disposable camera in terms of looks and weight and quality Ilford also makes their own version of a reusable disposable camera as well so I would recommend that over like buying disposables all the time especially if you are planning to shoot more than one roll of film or if you want to try a certain roll of film then obviously you need a camera and the disposable film cameras you obviously can't take out the film and put your own in it so overall there's nothing wrong with disposables but I would just say that if you plan to like shoot a lot of film for in situations where you could use just a regular camera then there are other options besides disposables The best way to get a point and shoot camera is to ask your family, your friends, if they or their parents has an old point and shoot camera that still works because free is better than paying money when that money could be used towards buying film. So I would definitely go that route first. The second route I would go to if that doesn't work is you go to secondhand stores like Goodwill, Salvation Army, etc and try to find a point shoot camera and hope that it works still. Obviously, if you live in like metropolitan areas, it's gonna be a lot harder to find a film camera. So I would definitely recommend going, if you go vacation anywhere that's more like in the rural area, you may have a higher shot of finding a point and shoot film camera that works. The other option obviously is eBay and some camera film stores will also sell point and shoot cameras but they'll definitely be marked up and I would only recommend that if you are more looking for a particular camera model. Obviously if you just type in film camera on eBay a bunch of stuff is going to pop up and that could be kind of annoying to go through. So I would definitely start with asking people you know, then the secondhand store antique route and then you go into like eBay and then camera and film shops. So there are a few factors that I think you should consider before buying a point and shoot camera. First is price obviously. You'll need to buy the most expensive point and shoot camera when starting out. A lot of times it's better to buy a cheaper camera that works well and use that extra money to try different film stocks and go out and shoot more because that's how you get better and that's how you figure out your style and what kind of look you want to go for when taking your photos. So no, you don't have to go buy the same film camera that Kendall Jenner uses because on that note, also if the film, your point and shoot film camera breaks you may not be able to fix it so then it becomes a very expensive paperweight and that's not what I'm trying to go for here and I think you want to actually go out and take film photos and not having a very expensive paperweight and so so another important factor to consider is the power source so not all point and shoot cameras use batteries the older ones sometimes use selenium or selenium I may be mispronouncing that but Selenium as like a power source to power the camera and if you obviously buy like a newer newer point and shoot camera from like the 90s or 2000s it will take a battery and not all point and shoot cameras take the same battery some take batteries that you can't find necessarily by walking into a Walmart, Target or CVS so that's something to be aware of in terms of like convenience because sometimes your camera film battery just dies and then you have to like order online and wait. So that's just something I think you should be aware of. Most times though, the film camera batteries do last a long time, assuming you turn it off obviously after you use it. And lastly, a factor to consider is what kind of lens do you want on the point and shoot camera? Since point and shoot cameras, you can't switch out the lenses like an SLR. You have to pick between a prime lens or a zoom lens. Prime lenses have a set focal length, so if you want to take a photo but you're far away you would have to physically be moved closer versus zoom lens you would either twist the lines or press a few buttons and the lens will zoom in for you. 
I personally use both zoom and prime lens point shoot cameras so the preference is really up to you some people say prime lenses take better photographs while zoom lenses offer flexibility so the choice is really up to you I know some people choose to pick prime lenses because it forces you to be more creative in composing your shot but as a beginner go whichever one will get you to go out and shoot photos so for point and shoot cameras i have this one and it still works this was my mom she used this for our family vacations and gatherings and it's an olympus style of zoom and it has a zoom lens and it's really easy to use you can find these for not too badly priced on ebay there are I also have this one, this is an Olympus Trip 35. As you can see, this one is a lot older. It doesn't have a flash on it. You have to buy the flash, but I don't really use flash when I take foam photos too often. And also, it's powered by uh, the selenium thing here. So it doesn't require a battery. So that's why I said there's like a difference between point shoot cameras. I may make a more in-depth video on um, point-and-shoot cameras and photography, but that is sort of a gist. There's also toy cameras like this one, which is made by Lomography. This is the LCA Plus. Uh, what's nice about the toy cameras is that they're lightweight, but also, however, they're probably more prone to, more prone to breaking because they're not made of this, like, the best materials available. So that's just something to consider. I think starting out with a point shoot camera is good because with a disposable, you're not inserting the film and putting it in, in and like you're not and you're also not testing out the film or loading it. So I think with a point shoot camera, it gives you more flexibility in terms of trying different films and also just getting used and familiar to the whole experience of doing film photography because obviously with digital you're not, you're not loading film into a camera you're not unloading it so i would definitely recommend point shoot over disposable starting out if you plan to like take more than like one shot of film like one roll of film i guess you could say For SLR cameras, so some people refer to them as manual cameras, which is true to some regard because all SLR cameras have a manual mode and need to be shot manually, especially if they're older. For example, I have this one, this is a Canon 80 one program. It has a manual mode, but however, it also has shutter priority mode which determine which you would determine how long you want to keep the shutter open when you take your shot and the camera will automatically determine the rest for the right exposure and it also has program mode which is basically auto so even though i shoot this in manual i still need to put a battery in it some film slrs will require a battery in it some won't if it has automatic modes it's obviously going to need some sort of a battery or power supply and if you have Canon EF lenses for Canon DSLRs you can also buy a Canon EOS film SLR I have this one this is a Canon EOS 3 I really like shooting this I know it looks like a DSLR digital camera but it is not as you can see there is no screen where you would normally see it on a DSLR uh, so I would highly recommend buying one of uh, these if you have Canon EF lenses because then you can just pop them on and just start shooting. And even if you're in the middle of the film roll, you can change the lens. So that it gives you more flexibility to take different kinds of photos and stuff. And also, uh, you can buy Canon EOS film bodies for pretty cheap. Even cheaper than this one because Apparently, this isn't as popular as buying this kind of camera because of, I think the aesthetic and there's and then this camera is just in particular is very overhyped. And so, I would easily recommend buying a cheap Canon EOS film camera. Even if you don't have EF lenses, you can buy cheap EF lenses online secondhand for a cheaper price, and you can use all that extra money and buy film which is what I would do. 
Now in terms of how to get your folds developed, if you live in like a city, I would highly recommend going to your local film lab to get it developed. I would not recommend going to like a Walmart, CVS, or Target. I'm not sure if Target even does film development anymore. But anyways, if you go to those big stores to develop your film, they'll send it off to somewhere else and that could take longer and I honestly don't think they do as good of a job as versus going to your local film lab. Another option is you can send, ship your film on to a photo lab. For example, there is one called The Dark Room in uh, Orange County, California. If you ship your film over, they'll develop it for you and then they'll send you back your scans or prints if you want and your negatives. And I think it starts at $12 to ship to um, get your film developed there. I tend to go to local film labs because I like supporting local business, especially here in Hawaii. And the one I go to, they can develop it within like a day or two, which is like a really fast turnaround and the scans look really nice. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. I may make more videos on how to start taking film bowls and tips for beginners so please like and subscribe so you can see more because I will tell you this hobby is uh, very addicting and also gets very expensive so you have been warned anyways thanks for watching again and see you guys next time bye